Hey, what's going on everyone? Thanks for checking out this video. Uh, my name is Tyler Edwards. Uh, appreciate you dropping by and all that kind of good stuff. Um, I've been pretty busy the last couple of months and not just me, the, the team I've been working with, which has been at Seacoast Church uh, here in my hometown, Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. And uh, we have pretty much been focusing all of the efforts uh, to the weekend service content. So, um, you know, we, we've kind of moved away from the live production side of things because obviously the church stores closed like every other church pretty much, at least in America, and uh, taken all the services online. So with that, the, the film team kind of, uh, you know, took control of, of the, the production cameras and all that kind of stuff. And we're able to kind of create a couple different sets uh, and, and, you know, be intentional about the lighting and all that kind of stuff to kind of make it a little bit more of a, a cinematic and, you know, intimate experience. And uh, it's been really cool. So the, the feedback's been really good. And uh, we've been very, very happy with how it's turned out. But uh, that's not really about this video. Uh, if you're not religious or into church, like the, you can definitely take stuff away from this because all we're going to talk about in this video, all I'm going to talk about is the lighting setup. And that's kind of what this is, just like a lighting BTS. I'm not even going to really go over the cameras because it's pretty irrelevant to talk about the cameras when you are talking about lighting because lights pretty much make any camera look good. So um, what I did um, this past week is I finally remembered to, to bring my camera and had time to just kind of walk around, get just pick off a few different shots of the actual setup that we have going on. So uh, this first shot is kind of like we did just finished recording the message. And so that's why you see the table in the center and um, it's kind of like if, if you're looking out. So to the right uh, on the screen, you have a 12 by and to the left, you have an eight by. So it's a key and a fill. And, um, and then there's a couple other things going on here as well. So let's just go ahead and jump into kind of the setup. So uh, to give you kind of some context of this set, the idea is um, it's supposed to kind of feel like, like a, a, a weekend service. So uh, kind of have the, 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 the stage vibe, you know, musicians, everything on stage and, and some of like production stage lights. So we have some like pars that are on the ground that kind of move and all that kind of stuff. Um, but what we did is we added some actual uh, video lights, continuous lighting sources to uh, kind of control the environment a little bit more and to make it look um, I hate this word, but a little bit more cinematic. And I really do. I really do think this uh, really kind of helps. In my opinion, I think this is a good definition of like what uh, something cinematic looks like because lighting. So anyways, uh, we'll go into the first, the, we'll go into the key light. First, the key light, we have a 12 by 12 frame with a 12 by 12 silk uh, attached to it. And then behind that, we have two uh, RE Sky panels. We have the S60 and the S30. And we're running them at full tilt at 5600 and just blasting a ton of light into it. And what that's doing is it's creating a giant light source. And the reason why we went with such a giant light source for the key light is because, well, well two things. Number one, it's giant soft light. And um, for you know the, the, the message where it's just one person, it could actually be a little further away because of how big the light source is. So um, we didn't have to like pull in a, you know, a, a soft box or something right next to them for the filming because we have a lot of wide shots that we use throughout the message for side thirds and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we wanted to have as big of a light source as possible to still keep it really soft uh, for the message to, you know, stage lights just look awful anyways. So uh, that's what we have. We have the big key light for that. And then the other reason is for all the musicians that are in the shot, we want to be able to cover as much of the stage as possible and as much of the mus musicians as possible. Uh, to kind of get exposure on everybody. And it kind of starts falling off towards uh, the keys and the drums in the back, um, but we'll go over that here in a minute. So like I said, 12 by 12 frame uh, with sky panels behind that, creating a big giant light source, super soft light, looks really good. Um, so yeah, now moving over to the, the other frame, that's an eight by eight. We had initially set up a, a Joker 800 and an Aperture 300D to basically be the fill light. And uh, that's why uh, you can see here, I've got the Aperture 300D with uh, just the hyper reflector on it with the barn doors in front of a four x four frame, uh, four x four diffusion going into an eight by uh, silk. The reason being is because we actually had the Joker 800 at the same time. We ended up striking the Joker because it was, it was actually just too bright and we didn't, we didn't have time to uh, switch up softbox and get rid of the, it was just really quick, much quicker to have the 300D and blast it into that four x four uh, silk or four by four, I think it was half grid or four grid, I can't remember. And then uh, into the silk 
to create a big, you know, a big light source for a, a, a fill light. But what that also does is that also adds just a little bit of a kick and a, a little bit of exposure to uh, that side of the room, uh, namely like the keys and, and stuff like that. Those are kind of the two main soft light sources. And then by the drums, what we did is we actually just put two quasar tubes up and just kind of faced them in towards the drummer. Uh, gave off a really cool effect. Uh, it looks pretty cool and it also helps just kind of add a little bit more depth to the shot, a little bit more dimension. Um, we liked it, I think it looks pretty cool. So um, so yeah, so that's that. And then the other things we did, we kind of added some practicals into the mix. So production, uh, like live production team, they actually have some floor pars, the, the movable ones that they had that kind of added some a little bit of character. We didn't have them spinning very fast, but uh, we had some plants and stuff like that on stage and just kind of added like a little bit of movement um, behind the plant, so it looked pretty cool there. And then, uh, and then what we did is we actually found um, four old Source 4 tungsten lights, no, no Lecos or anything like that. And um, we just had those down. Uh, we had them down pretty low, but it just kind of added uh, some, um, you know, depending where you were, it added some cool little lens flares, but just added a little bit of like depth and, and, and character to the, the background, because otherwise it just kind of like disappears into black. So we wanted to have a couple of these little uh, practical, these little tungsten fixtures to just kind of add some color contrast and all that kind of stuff. And then the other thing that it did is we kind of pointed it towards a, a couple specific little spots, um, uh, two being the keys and the organ on either, either side. We put that just kind of add like a little bit of a rim and a little bit of a edge light to each of those. So uh, they were definitely helping out. And then on the A cam, just kind of we kept one camera pretty much on the lead singer at the entire time. We had four or five cameras running uh, pretty much every week and the main cam the a cam we always had uh kind of shooting into the shadow side or the fill side uh of of the singer what what that kind of did is uh it just obviously it, it looks we just prefer shooting like that because it looks uh, really awesome but the other thing is those tungstens behind kind of added sometimes a little bit of a lens flare or just kind of a cool cool effect a cool little edge light um to to the singer so it looked pretty cool and um I'm out of breath and I think that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. So like I said, this is definitely uh, applicable to not just uh, a, an, an online church experience, but I mean, really anything like music videos, I mean, that we're, we're, we're recording the, the worship set, you know, up front. And that's, I mean, essentially we're recording a, a music video each week. And um, yeah, so uh, you can apply this to a ton of different scenarios, a ton of different situations, whether you're, um, you know, filming a keynote speaker, um, obviously if, everybody's in the auditorium or wherever you are you can't really have all these uh, soft light fixtures and stuff up but if it's an online thing where you're trying to give you know a, a keynote speaker um, and make them look as as best as possible you can kind of apply these uh, different techniques um, depending on the size of the room change the size of your light source and all that kind of stuff but um, anyways i hope you found that helpful useful informative anything like that uh, if you did uh, hit the thumbs up or hit it down, whatever, whatever you're feeling today. Um, you can subscribe. You don't have to. Um, obviously, I'm not in it for the subscriptions or I don't, I don't know. But anyways, subscribe if you want to. Um, if you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments below. Sorry, I'm a little scatterbrained right now, but it's been, uh, been pretty busy. Got a lot of stuff going on right now. A lot of stuff in the works. Super excited about a lot of stuff, a lot of good stuff. But uh, anyways, um, thanks for watching. This is, um, this is a really awkward ending. I don't really know how to end it. So I'm just going to end it.